scientists have discovered the oldest known bee fossil in a Burma mine. So what's all the buzz about? Preserved in amber, the bee is dated to 100 million years old on the evolutionary timeline. The Live Science article states, The discovery of the oldest bee fossil supports the theory that bees evolved from wasps. Apparently, this ancient bee has narrower hind legs than modern bees, and wasps have narrower hind legs than bees. In the evolutionary model, shared anatomical characteristics are seen as evidence of a common ancestor. However, a more critical analysis of the discovery reveals much stronger evidence for the biblical creation model. Old B, Young Creation by Daniel Anderson Lead author George Poinar had this to say about the fossil. This is the oldest bee we've ever been able to identify. He goes on to say, overall, it's more bee than wasp. It is also significant that this supposedly 100 million year old bee fossil sports branched hairs on its legs. This is a characteristic found in modern bees for collecting pollen. This particular fossil bee is a male, and hence it is hard to compare its pollen collecting features with modern bees since only females actually collect the pollen. Nevertheless, despite being male, it is still recognizably a bee. If this is so after a hundred million years, how is this evidence for evolution? In fact, it is strong empirical evidence against evolution and positive evidence for creation. Bees are rapidly reproducing insects. Given a hundred million years to reproduce billions of offspring, the sheer number of genetic mutations should have altered bee morphology to a considerable, even overwhelming, degree, even though such an accumulated change would be degenerative overall, ignoring the likelihood of extinction due to such accumulating mutational load. However, the fact that bee morphology has not changed in any major way strongly suggests that bees have not existed for a hundred million years. There simply hasn't been enough time enough mutations, or enough bee generations to affect substantial anatomical change. Evolutionists may respond that some organisms demonstrate very little morphological change because they live in highly specialized environments. In other words, because the environment has remained virtually unchanged, natural selection would preserve the status quo in creature morphology. The problem is that bees live on almost every continent, and in almost every type of climate. And since environment refers not just to things like the weather in one's surroundings, for instance, but to predators, prey, food sources, and so on, it seems totally inconceivable to have no significant environmental change in such an incredibly long time period. In fact, the fossil evidence paints a much clearer picture. The lack of great morphological change supports the biblical creation model in which bees were created only about 6,000 years ago. Bees have always been bees. Within what we call the bee kind, there is a considerable amount of variation, but they are still identifiable as bees. Some bees have narrower legs than others, but this does not indicate that they shared a common ancestor with wasps. In the creation model, Many unrelated organisms share common design features due to a common designer. For example, moles have keeled sternums and wrist bones that are quite similar to birds, yet no evolutionist would ever suggest that they share a close evolutionary relationship. Therefore, it is not a surprise that bees and wasps would share some common anatomy. Although they're different insect kinds, they are both small flying insects and they share a common creator. And bees are not the only living fossils. Countless other living organisms, such as marine invertebrates, insects, fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals look very similar to their oldest known fossils. Again, this is a strong biological evidence for a recent creation. Creatures were made to reproduce after their own kind, and this is what the fossil record reveals. Ironically, the only way in which the bee was fossilized may also point to a massive flood. Entombment in amber, fossilized tree resin, is a rare fossilization event, but there is areas containing large deposits of amber. 
The formation of such copious amounts of resin, and the circumstances in which such fossils are found, suggests large numbers of broken tree trunks and branches, rapid water transport, wet sediments of clay and sand, and heat. It is plausible that Noah's flood, heated in some locations by mineral-rich fountains of the Great Deep, provided the necessary geological conditions to entomb this bee in amber around 4,500 years ago. People want to understand where we all came from, so the scientific community, religions, and education systems have each rose to the challenge to give answer to why we are all here. One way or another, we are limited by the number of facts and opinions we can gather and assess. Evolutionists and creationists should both be aware of the facts though, no matter what, before they draw conclusions or debate origins and reality itself. If you want answers to evolution's most perplexing claims, you'll want to get a copy of the Creation Answers book. It provides biblical answers to over 60 important questions that everyone should be informed on, like, what about radiocarbon dating? How did all the animals fit on the ark? Where are all the human fossils? How did bad things come about in the first place? Not only does the book answer these questions, but you will also get equipped to effectively respond to those that resist the gospel due to the theory of evolution. The Creation Answers book is a must-have for anyone's library. So get a copy today at creation.com store. I am Joseph Darnell. For all of us at Creation Ministries International from around the world, thanks for listening.